Thermal spas have a lot to offer, from heated loungers to salt rooms to hot tubs. There's a lot that can, you can enjoy and experience to help with some relaxation on your cruise. We're not going to be talking about the spa services today, but more we're going to be looking at that extra charge to enter the thermal spa or thermal suite. This is open to people in all cabin types, and but it is an additional charge. So not all cruise lines, I would say, do it the same. So we're going to have a look to see who does it the best, going over some pros and cons and our thoughts. I'm Linda, and this is Aaron with Traveling Flamingo, and let's get into it. So the first spa, we're going to start off with the positives and things that we liked about the different cruise lines thermal spas. So let's get started with our very first experience in a thermal spa on the NCL Breakaway. Yes, and I will try to keep my, I tend to always bring up positives in the negative section and the negatives in the positive. I will try to avoid doing that. So our first experience was on the NCL Breakaway. So the NCL Breakaway uh, from Norwegian Cruise Lines. I had one pool. There was only a single pool on board, and uh, we were a bit worried about that because we do enjoy the pool. We're in the Caribbean. It's very hot in the Caribbean, as you know, and uh, we were wondering what, what could we do, what would be a good idea. And so when we got on board, we took the tour in the beginning of the, the first day of the cruise where you're able to go through all these different areas that you usually can't, and we really enjoyed uh, the thermal spa there. So we like what we saw. It had some pools. We'll get into that, and uh, we thought, hey, why don't we sign up for this? So we did, and uh, that was our first introduction into mm -hmm. using these thermal spas, and we've been through a number of them since, so we're going to give you our opinions on them. Yeah, I'm so glad we got the thermal spa on that cruise. It was a seven-day Caribbean cruise. The price wasn't bad. I think it was $120 for the full cruise for each of us, and that was unlimited access in and out. They had tons of heated loungers along the front. You were up high uh, along the front of the ship, so you could see right out on wherever you were sailing or at port and it was beautiful yeah. they also had some comfortable padded loungers they had a massive therapy pool hot tub sauna salt room you know steam room they had a lot of options there as well and it was a big area with the windows at the front i think it was a beautiful area it was well laid out and we used it a lot yeah, we were there almost every day of the cruise even on even at night because it was open later so we had dinner and we'd go there as well yes very nice way to sort of end the day relaxing so a lot of positives to say about the ncl breakaway and how they set up their thermal spa yeah the next one I would say is Virgin Voyages, their thermal spa, mm -hmm. and that not on an upper deck, it's a lower deck, but they do still have some porthole windows, which are nice. They even had the windows in some of the treatment rooms, like the sauna, which I love the hot, dry sauna, yes. as well as the salt room. They had the windows there, and they have them, um, instead of individual loungers, they have a massive heated slab, so a two-story slab of marble that you can lie on that's heated. And you made a good point about that and why they would maybe use those. Yeah, I think they uh, use the marble slab. Like, it is just a giant sort of slab. <laughs> and uh, I think they do that because Virgin is very big on uh, creating experiences with people. So if you have a group together, like, you're not separated. You're not in individual beds. You can have your group together and you can sort of hang out as a group. Or you can meet people if you're alone and it's busy and someone comes down next to you reading the same book as you, that sort of thing. Uh, like, they try to create those experiences. And I think that's one of the reasons they do it where like, you know, it could be awkward if you don't want that, which would be us. But on the other hand, if it's, you know, it's an opportunity to meet people or have your group together or, you know. It's just not as comfortable being, I mean, you could put a slab counter on this video, just being a flat, yeah. you know, slab of, of marble. It's, like it's not as, up. yeah, it's not as comfortable to be lying down on. Another great option in the Virgin area is they have these plunge pools. So they're individual, although you will see how many they can actually pack in there because it does tend to be a, a bit of an experiment <laughs> when you go there it's only for one and you find four people in it you're like wow i can't believe everybody crammed in there but they got these sponge pools uh and there are two different options really yeah you've got a hot one and a cold one and i did appreciate having the two especially the cold one i have a lot of inflammation and i know aaron he also found it nice as well so having that was also a unique option option the therapy pool and then the hot and cold plunge i'm a bit more of a polar bear so i do enjoy the cold uh, once on NCL, they have those uh, those frozen bars or the the what are they called? It was an ice bar, ice yeah, bar. yeah, ice bar, ice bar, and uh, 
people go in there with snow suits. They try to make you wear them. And I'm like, can I just go in my shirt and T-shirt? Go in my shorts and T-shirt? <laughs> yeah. So the, just another ad that they yeah, had. Yeah, really unique, that they a had. bit different. It's kind of yeah. cool. We did love the therapy pool. We loved the different rooms they had. Something very unique to Virgin is that they had a mud treatment. So you get a little cup of mud or two cups of mud, depending how big you are. <laughs> We're pretty big. Uh, and you could cover your arms, your back, your legs. And in this mud, you'd sit in a, a steam room type for 10 minutes and then you know wash it off and out you go and that was a really cool treatment i'd never had a mud treatment before and we did yeah. enjoy doing that every time we went we made sure we did that because we've never had that yeah, before unique. it was really really nice the 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 so yeah yeah you could buy individual passes or passes for the whole trip uh, they do sell a lot of passes so if you're looking to go and you don't want it to be as busy definitely book on a port day or a day where you don't expect uh, to be at the port for a long time and that's probably the same for all cruise lines we just really noticed that with Virgin and something that could be a pro or a con depending on 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 which way you feel about this they do check to see how long you've been in there for mm. so we did see some people being ushered out nicely uh, in that they had overstayed their three hour block of time so. we'll get to that later but that's a pro and a con it is a pro and a con it's a pro that's for true. people that are waiting and it's a, true. you know it's a con for people who might want to spend a bit more time yes so uh, the next one would be the celebrity edge and we had actually got the aqua class on this one so we had access to the thermal spa as much as we want as well as the blue restaurant and it was beautiful i am a sucker for yes. unique chairs and you know i don't they're just it was set up very nice it was very trendy looking the sauna had a nice you know floor to ceiling window out there and uh, they had beautiful. showers they had tons of heated loungers they did have an outdoor area that wasn't set up on our sailing but you could go and sit outside as well and they had the salt rooms and saunas so it was a nice area if you're looking to experience those rooms and the heated loungers i yeah. would say yeah it was, it was a beautiful room uh they also had the rain shower heads they had like a progression of shower heads and different temperatures and so there was some some neat neat things and a great space to relax i think that was a huge uh, plus on on that part is they had a lot of areas to relax funky chairs mm -hmm. stuff like that the carnival mardi gras toured that one with my sister and there's a nice therapy pool some comfortable loungers heated loungers and some showers uh in there and then the disney wish mm -hmm. That one is gorgeous, uh, rainforest themed, it's gorgeous. There's inside treatment rooms, there's an outside area, and I love it whenever there's an outside area. Uh, and in that outside area, they have the three hot tubs that are set up like the hidden Mickey. So that's what you can see when you look at the front of the ship. And as a sucker for chairs, as I already said, they've got some comfortable chairs as well as like love seat kind of chairs for couples. So I think that was a nicely how that, done how that is set up. Yeah, it's beautiful. And it's themed, I believe, after a rainforest. And so it's it's very nice. They've got scented showers as well. So you can, I think there's three or four of them. And so you can have like a scented shower and they had a lot of beautiful areas in the in the Disney Disney one. No wind, well, we'll get into the negatives. Yes, but, uh, it was, but in, I think in that sense, it was set up beautifully, mm -hmm. lots of different options for the, for the treatment rooms inside, outside, and it, being on a Disney cruise, having an adult only area, yes. if you'd like that sort of break is also a plus as well. Uh, so Royal Caribbean on the Wonder of the Seas. Um, well, they have one, but that was a plus. So uh, yeah, and there's heated loungers. And there are heated loungers. So uh, on to the uh, negatives. Uh, and just before, actually, if you'd like any more information, we do have a lot of tours of these uh, thermal spas already, as well as ship tours, port tours, tons of information to help you plan your trip. So when this video is done, if you'd like to check out our channel, we really do appreciate the support and that you've taken the time to watch our video. So as much as there's a lot you can do in the thermal spas to relax, uh, there are some drawbacks to each cruise line and how they have it set up, uh, in addition to that it costs extra. Yeah. So uh, let's get started with Virgins. Yeah, so Virgin, uh, you know, one of the things that they lacked were sort of loungers. There wasn't much space to lounge. You had the marble slab. Slab. And that was it. <laughs> so if you enjoy flat surfaces, then you'll love that. It's great. Uh, that was one of the negatives that we had found. Uh, and also, as Aaron had touched earlier, you had to book three-hour blocks. Yeah. So it wasn't come and go like we experienced on NCL. 
you had to, and also when you signed up, you had to pick which block you were going to be coming in. And so we had some onboard credit and we thought, okay, we'll, we'll pay for the thermal pass for the trip. And they said, okay, so when are you coming each day? And I'm going, I felt very rushed to pick the times that I wanted to be there. And so we just tried to, you know, slow it down ourselves, go day by day. What excursions do we have? Are we at port or not? Do we want to sleep in that day? Do we have a dining reservation? So just tried to slow down to book our three hour and you spots. Had to do all of that when you booked it. So you had to sit there while all the other people are going through the spa with someone picking out what days and what times and making sure it wasn't too full those times. She like did around your schedule. Yeah, the the crew member did say, you know, you can call and see if it's quieter at other times. I just felt that I the experience to me felt very restricted with this three hour time slot and having to pick it. I actually right didn't mind away. the three hour time slot. What bothered me was picking it because mm. it was like, great, now I've got to pre plan everything I'm doing in order to go to this thermal spa. Now it might work better if it's a sea day, of course, because you probably don't have as many excursions and stuff. So sea days might be more more valuable. So maybe just a one day or a two day. Uh, to go in there if you have two sea days, but other than that, you know, like if you want, if you have your formal night or your scarlet red scarlet party night, you could go ahead and do the spa before or something. But, mm-hmm. You know, it was difficult to book around all the other stuff going on. And as you know, things change, plans change, and you got to call. Not only do you have to change your dining, you have to change this. Or, yeah. You know. So that was a, that to us it was hassle. a drawback. A lot of upfront a... hassle, but the it was a nice uh, nice thermal spa. Right yes. There. For the Carnival Mardi Gras, one of the drawbacks, I would say, was um, they didn't have as many treatment rooms as other cruise ships do, and there were no windows. And so when we're on a cruise ship and we're traveling, especially, you know, we're I want to be able to see outside, I want to see the water, and so that was a big drawback for us. Also on our sailing... For some reason, they weren't offering one-day passes. I don't know. I don't know why. But you had to lock in that you wanted a, a pass for the whole trip, and that was something we weren't going to make use of. It was my sister's first cruise. There was a lot to be experiencing. It was a port-heavy cruise. We just knew we weren't going to be going there every day, so we we opted out of paying for it because of that lack of windows, lack of options that there was down there, and uh, not having a single-day pass. Yeah. Um, On to the Celebrity Edge class. Uh, One of the things for us that we didn't really like was a lack of hot tub, pool, or therapy pool. Any kind of sort of water other than the showers. I think that sitting in a hot tub or sitting in a pool is very relaxing and that would be a preferred choice for us. So not having that at all, even though we had access every day, we didn't actually go that often. there, There was no sort of water option for you. It was basically just the showers and the steam room slash the uh, sauna and a salt room. And that was about it. But they, yeah, that was about it. But it is a beautiful, relaxing area. Great place to go with a book on the heated loungers or in the sauna. Yeah. Next up is the Disney Wish. So they had hot tubs are only outside. So it can get hot, of course, and you're in a hot tub. Now, of course, all the hot tubs on the, on the main decks and the Lido decks are usually outside. But it is your only option. There's no inside option for hot tubs. Yeah, and I think for us at this sailing, neither of us, the doctors were recommending that we use a hot tub. So when you're only, you know, you have the hot tubs outside, you got comfortable chairs, you did have some of the room experiences, but not being, you know, not having a, just a therapy pool and it only being hot tubs was definitely a drawback for us, as well as the price. It yeah, is not it's cheap. Expensive. It's very expensive. And many of the, especially on the Disney Wish, the sailings are only three or four days. So with ports and so much to explore on the ship, is are you going to really spend much time there? Is it going to be worth the price for you? I mean, we did meet somebody who was doing back to back, which is yeah. great. I mean, <laughs> yeah, like they, they had... Not that I want to bring in a plus, but they had really nice individual rooms that included like little hot tubs, but they're expensive. Mm-hmm. You know, like everything in there is expensive. Yeah, and that sort of brings us to the Royal Caribbean wonder of yeah. wonder of the seas is that they did have a ther- a, you know thermal spa suite room with the heated loungers. Um, it was the smallest we've ever seen, and and I, that is a cruise ship that I would say is definitely more set up for paying for the treatments. They even had spa type rooms, so you could have a private room with the shower and a hot tub or a sauna, um, not sauna, hot tub or jacuzzi. But you didn't have this massive area, yeah. the social that Virgin it, has. It was literally just you know, it almost looked like a very tiny movie theater that had some heated. Benches. Yes, so definitely they're more about you could pay for a private, you know, little room with it, but not for everybody. And no secondary pool or no thought therapy pool. Or yeah. So it was 
I don't know. They had one. You could relax for a little bit before your treatment, but it was really just all rooms. And it's like filled with rooms. Mm. Side note to treatments. Yes. <laughs> they can be very expensive. Uh, and I have found that, you know, we, we do have insurance that covers a massage. If it's by a registered massage therapist, that's not guaranteed on a cruise ship and you are paying a lot of money. And so... I find that I would rather save the money I'd be paying for a massage on the cruise and use it towards an excursion or a, a specialty yeah. restaurant. And at the end, they love to upsell. Yeah, the upsell, I think, is the worst part of it, really. Like, I know this is maybe a bit of a hot take because a lot of people do love the spas on board. Uh, but for us, at least, we find that that sort of high-pressure sales tactic after a massage <laughs> kind of just negates the point of that massage or that experience where they're asking you if you want the you know moisturizers they're using or the whatever it is that you're getting, you know, mm -hmm. aloe gel or what have you, you know, I, I, it would be nice if they present it and give you an option and then leave it at that. But they usually talk about it throughout the whole thing. And you kind of know it's coming during the massage. You're like, do you like the smell of this? This is what I'm going to use. And then they keep talking about it while massaging you. And then at the end, they try to sell it to you. So, I don't know, just to me, at least to us, it kind of waters yeah. down that experience. But again, I know they're popular with many. So overall, I would say there are two definitely wins for us that we think stand out in terms of being the best thermal spas and an honorable mention. So one of which is the Disney Wish. It is a beautiful thermal spa. The indoor options, the outdoor options, the different treatment rooms, the chairs, how they've got it laid out. It was absolutely beautiful. Uh, I if mean, you can afford it. <laughs> it, other than the price, of course, but if, if it is beautiful, it is an absolutely beautiful area with lots of options. So that one would be one. Um, yeah, and I think the second one for us was NCL. We really enjoyed the NCL Breakaways Thermal Spa, our first, but it was a lot of space. It had a lot of, they had the, the it had the uh, pool, the separate pool area that you could enjoy. It had nice bubbles and like a relaxing bench in the water so you could really have a good time there. They had the salt rooms, the steam rooms, everything you'd expect really from one and a view, which we also yes. really enjoyed. Yeah, and it offered enough flexibility in everything that they yeah. offered. So that was definitely up there with the, the top two. And then our honorable mention would be the Virgin yeah. Spa because the options that they had, the mudroom is very unique. You know, get there on a port day. It's very much like the breakaway, only they had that weird scheduling and three-hour block mm -hmm. of time thing, which, you know, again, policies change physically on the, on the ship. It's a beautiful thermal spa. So hopefully some of those policy changes, or you could even just book it online, you know, yeah. so much of it's app focused. It'd be nice, even if they had those windows, at least you could see it in your planner. You didn't have to stand, sit down with a piece of paper and a pencil and pencil in your time. So, so anyways, honorable mention goes to Virgin because it is a very nice uh, one. Yeah, let us know what you think in the comments below. Do you think these thermal spas are worth the extra cost? Did we miss some of the pros or cons of any of the thermal spas? We love hearing your ideas and your opinions. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch our video. We also have another channel, Flamingos in Wonderland, where we talk about all things Disney and theme parks. So if you want to check out that, that would be great as well. Remember, memories are forever, so make them fabulous. Thanks again for watching and happy travels. Okay.